I'm Peter Block, and we're at ACC 2019 in, I have to say it right, New Orleans. And I'm here today with Bruce Roman, and we're talking about depression. And Bruce has taught, just in the last 10 minutes, has taught me a lot about what depression really means in patients with heart failure. So we're going to talk a little bit about your trial, Bruce, which is the Hopeful Heart Trial. Uh, a trial that sort of explores new territory, though it isn't new territory for you. Tell me about Hopeful Heart, and then we'll get quickly to the end. Sure. Well, the Hopeful Heart is a uh, uh, NHLBI-funded trial um, designed to look at the impact of treating depression and heart failure together, systolic heart failure. Um, we conducted it at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, and uh, we screened patients uh, at eight area hospitals for depression with something called the PHQ-2, and followed up two weeks later after discharge with the PHQ-9. This is something that the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association recommended for routine screening of, of uh, cardiac patients. If the patients were still depressed two weeks after hospital discharge, we then randomized them to one of three arms. There was a usual care control arm, there was collaborative care for heart failure alone, and then there was a blended model of collaborative care for both heart failure and depression. We trained up, our team trained up uh, uh, several uh, uh, medical nurse care managers who uh, did all this over the telephone. We had weekly case review meetings with a study cardiologist and a study internist, and then uh, they both adjusted the cardiac medications, like ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, and so on, as well as uh, adjusted medications for depression if a patient was interested, or encourage healthy eating habits, avoiding tobacco, um, and, other, and, and if we couldn't get people well, to see a community mental health specialist. Okay, so in fact, a psychiatrist is one, part of one of these groups, the blended group. Yes. So the, you did uh, also adjust their psychiatric medicine, so to speak, right? If, if they were interested. About Fair half enough. the patients were on a mental health medication, and that, typically an SSRI at baseline, and um, about 70% were on it at the end of the study. Okay. So it wasn't like we were throwing people on pills. Right. No, I understand. So you showed me a slide that... Uh, I was very impressed by it. learned something. Almost half the patients with heart failure had depression. That's an interesting statistic. So at the end of this day, what did you learn from this trial? Well, the major things that we learned is that you can, uh, one is that depression was common in patients with heart failure, and it's important to follow up and, and, and do the ACC AHA guidelines uh, to screen for depression, number one. Number two is that if you can, uh, uh, the doctors who may be listening to this, um, you can train a medical nurses to treat depression over the telephone in conjunction with people's uh, uh, primary care physicians. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be separate from routine cardiac care. Number three, we found that if you treated the depression, you improved mood symptoms as well as significantly improved uh, health-related quality of life. And that's and then, important, isn't it? Absolutely. And the fourth thing that we learned is that, is that um, uh, uh, the patients, the cardiac patients with mood symptoms reported more symptoms. They, they self-rated their health as worse. They self-rated their quality of life as worse. Even though that they had uh, essentially the same ejection fraction and the same rates of diabetes and, and, and hypertension, post-MI, and so on. Got it. So I'm going to interrupt you and say, okay, is it the depression that causes the mood change? Or is it the, and the symptoms, or is it the symptoms that cause the depression and mood change? Well, that's a great the, question, Dr. Block. But if I were seeing a patient in front of me, you know, I'm a pragmatic guy, I would just say it doesn't matter. Who cares? We need, yeah, depression kills. It's pretty okay. clear. There have been uh, numerous established studies. The main question is if you treat the depression, can you improve the quality of life? Can you reduce readmissions, improve adherence with evidence-based care, and, and just make your patients feel better? But you can't keep them from dying, can you? Well, depression kills. So if I had to put it on a bumper sticker, I'd say that. No, you can't. And, and as the famous economist John Maynard Keynes said, in the long run, we're all dead. So, but what can we do in the short run to improve our patients' <laughs> well, lives? Well, with that very positive note, uh, depression kills. But the fact of the matter is you need to treat your patients, look for the depression in your patients, and then take care of them. Absolutely. Thanks, Thank you for having me.